The NES library was packed with greats, but once the Super NES came out, enthusiasm for the 8-bit juggernaut waned considerably. Beginning in 1992, great releases became fewer and further between. Nevertheless, the NES continued to play host to excellent releases until its very end in 1994, and many of those latter-day greats have gone largely overlooked due to being overshadowed by the Super NES. Serious classic enthusiasts owe it to themselves to have a look. Bucky O'Hare Konami picked up some weird licenses in the latter NES days, and Bucky O'Hare might be the weirdest. Based on a 70s comic book by G.I. Joe scribe Larry Hama, this adventure starred a green rabbit from outer space and his pals. But coming from Konami, a company that had refined its 8-bit craft over the space of a decade, that weirdness came in a spit-polished wrapper. Dragon Warrior 3 one of the most influential RPGs ever, Dragon Warrior 3 brought the concept of dynamic character classes to console role-playing. A huge adventure boasting tons of player choices and a great story, it's hard to believe this is related to the original Dragon Warrior. But it was, bringing the trilogy's story full circle. Gargoyle's Quest 2 Here's a weird one, an NES sequel to a Game Boy game. The original Gargoyles Quest put players in control of the most vexing enemy from Ghosts and Goblins in an adventure-style platformer journey. The sequel cranked up every element of the idea a few notches. Dragon Warrior 4 Another Dragon Warrior? Yes. Players barely had time to get through the third adventure before Enix localized the next, but there was little chance of Dragon Warrior burnout when the fourth game revolutionized the series and genre so radically. Featuring a huge party of characters whose stories converge individually into one grand quest, Dragon Warrior 4 was quite simply the finest 8-bit RPG ever made, an NES essential. Little Samson. Taito released a handful of brilliant action games late in the NES's life, but none so good as Little Samson. Playing like a cross between Mega Man and Wonder Boy 3, this brilliant platformer features great graphics, excellent music, and the ability to swap between several very different heroes on the fly. The downside? It's exceedingly rare, with the bare cart costing hundreds of dollars and the complete game requiring a second mortgage. Bomberman 2 the original Bomberman barely resembles the series as we think of it today, featuring strictly solo play, but the sequel did more than just iterate on the first game. It also introduced the multiplayer mode, which would become the series' main selling point for the next 20 years. Fire and Ice you wouldn't know it from the title, but Fire and Ice was the sequel to Solomon's Key, that classic from the early days of the NES. The two games have almost nothing to do with each other, with Fire and Ice more closely resembling something like Pengo or Kickle Cubicle than the previous game. Strange, but still enjoyable. Kirby's Adventure You could call Kirby's Adventure Nintendo's NES swan song. Developed by HAL as a semi-sequel to Kirby's Dreamland for NES, this platformer gave Kirby his trademark transformation powers. With tons of different skills available throughout the huge array of beautifully designed stages, Kirby's Adventure set a high watermark for 8-bit game design and cemented Kirby's place in the pantheon of major Nintendo characters. Mighty Final Fight there was no chance Capcom would be able to convert Arcade Smash Final Fight to NES in a satisfying form, so instead they reinvented the game as a goofier, more lighthearted take on brawling. The end results were hard to take seriously, but honestly they were a lot more entertaining than the quote-unquote superior Final Fight port for Super NES. Mega Man 6 by the time Mega Man 6 came out, we'd already been spoiled by the luxurious thrills of Mega Man X on Super NES. Reverting back to 8 bits felt a little painful. Still, this final NES outing for one of the system's mainstays was worth it. A top-notch take on the classic formula with excellent music and visuals and some interesting attempts to add depth and secrets to the series. Perhaps the most underrated and overlooked Mega Man game ever. 
And finally, Zoda's Revenge, Star Tropics 2. This was the last major release for NES before the boring Wario's Woods shut the system down. Zoda's Revenge was an ambitious and slightly bizarre sequel to Star Tropics that smoothed over a lot of the earlier game's shortcomings. Maybe not the most fitting finale for the NES, but a decent game in its own right. Thank <laughs> you.